example, on these x-rays here, this is an individual who has uh, degenerative disc disease at the L5S1 level. Uh, the disc is protuberant, it's dark, and essentially this is what we uh, determined to be the source of her chronic low back pain. Of course, this is the type of an individual who has had chronic back pain. She has failed literally all non-operative measures, physical therapy, medications, uh, pain interventionalists, and she's continued to have difficulty. Part of the workup included a lumbar discogram, which is a test, it's a provocative test, where we actually go in and place needles into the spine, into the disc bases at three consecutive levels and then we determine if the pain is reproduced or uh, what we call concordant uh, at the suspected degenerative level. And of course, this is what we found in uh, this individual's case. So today we're going to proceed with the minimally invasive T-lift, or MIS-T-lift for short. So this is a typical setup for a minimally invasive transpraminal fusion. We have the patient positioned on their belly we have the equipment that we need in the room, which includes fluoroscopy. We have the uh, patient appropriately anesthetized, which is a general uh, endotracheal anesthetic. And this allows for me access of, of fluoroscopy and uh, the appropriate visualization of all of the tools that I need to do the case. I'm going to make an incision on the right side of her back, which is about an inch in length, perhaps about four centimeters off the midline, which is over the paraspinal muscles. We'll take this approach down to her facet joint at the L5S1 level, and I'll do that with a series of dilators. Okay, let's get an image. So the first thing we'll do here is obtain an AP image, and we'll try to get a parallel view of the L5 disc space, which in this case is the disc that we're actually addressing. We'll make the incision a lot of this stuff is done with, uh, with x-ray. That's a really important part of the procedure is really fluoroscopy. So now we have a picture in both planes of our dilators coming down. So at this point I've got the uh, dilators going in and we're going to set our retractor blade in and the retractor is going to be secured to the table using this device right here. So the retractor goes in. I can expand open the retractor blades a little bit. And at this point, it's about as big around as my index finger. And that's the, this is the way that we'll be working in for the rest of the case. So at this point, what I'll do is I'll take down uh, some of the muscle off the bone. We really don't have to do much to the muscle because most of the muscle has been split. So we're going through the muscle atraumatically with the exception of what I have to elevate off of the bone here. Right here? Yeah, yeah. So here we are, we're coming down on the facet joint right here. This is my entry point. As I do this procedure, I come down on the facet joint. And what I know is that when I see the, the facet joint, uh, the, the, the actual joint itself, this is a perfect point to come in for the MIST lift because of the simple fact we're coming down through the joint and we'll take off the entire facet joint. So at this point, the next step is to burr down the facet joint. I have a, a, a special Midas attachment that is bent, slightly curved, and so it fits into the uh, into the retractor very nicely and that way it keeps my hand out of the field and I can see what I'm doing. So again, as I mentioned, I use the joint during the dissection. I just basically burr down within the joint and as long as I'm seeing the cartilage, I know that I'm still within the joint. The white that I'm seeing is cartilage. When I start to see the red, I'm starting to get down into the bone of the actual facet joint itself. We'll take an x-ray here. So here we can see I've adjusted the, the burr tip and now we're directing centrally into the, uh, the disc space. So I'm seeing some bleeding down at the very bottom. It means I've gone through the facet joint and I'm getting some bleeding from the perineural fat. I'll basically place a curette down into the area and I can feel for the pedicle and that gives me my inferior 
edge in terms of how far down I want to go. At this point I've removed all of the bone laterally and what we can see here is the perineural fat. I've got the, uh, the disc space will be in view after we bobby down some of the adipose tissue. So at this point here's the pen field. We can see the disc space in view right here. We will start to engage into the disc space. We have a series of disc, straight, the disc space curettes that will remove the disc. So come on in here. Let's take a look at this please. So at this point I take an offset curette and I'm going to reach further across the disc base now. So at this point we're going to begin trialing with a spacer. And we'll check this out. We'll see how it feels going in. We'll look at it with x-ray. Alright, let's get a look at this please. So she's going to be, looks like a 27. She's not very long as far as the cage is concerned. Sometimes we we'll use longer cages. What I go by when I put this in is I feel the tension in terms of the spacer. I can feel how tight it is. I can actually lift the patient up with the spacer in place and that tells me that I'm starting to get a, a good interference fit. So at this point we're packing now the helos into the disc space with the BMP. See the cage, please. This is 11 by 27 cage, and we see it going in here. Let's get a look at this, please. Okay. So at this point now we're getting ready to put our, our screws in, so we come in with a jam sheety needle. Lateral. And so we basically put the screw in at this point. Okay. Lateral. So at this point, we're going to put our rod in place. Laura, you know how to load that up in the middle. The, uh, the rod's going to go into the inserter right through here. See a lateral, please? Let's have a torque and a counter. Over now, please. Okay. We're making, making the second uh, incision now for the opposite side, and we'll put the other two screws on the contralateral side. Let's see the lateral, please. Set uh, lateral. Set lateral.
Let's see a ladle. Okay, and let's see the uh, bilateral. Oh. 